Okay, so welcome to a discussion about the React Context API. This is a really, really useful thing. I know we've touched on it a little bit during our uh, advanced session on a React, but we're gonna spend a little more time on it and how we can actually use it in a real application to solve some really, what would otherwise be fairly difficult problems with managing state because as we know by now, managing state in any kind of reasonably complex React application is not simple. Um, managing state you know, can be a challenge and it's, and it's been a challenge for React developers for a very long time. So the React Context API is relatively new um, and the hook that we're gonna use, which is um, use context, is relatively new as well. And it solves a lot of problems for us and makes what was otherwise quite a difficult um, thing, which is sharing state, into something like, wow, it's just so easy. Now, bear in mind, this is one way to share state. And for small, medium-sized applications, this works. Larger applications, you might be tempted to use something like Redux. Redux is a, is a really great add-on to React which specializes in managing state. It takes a bit of getting used to. In the scheduler app, we did kind of set things up similar to what you would see in Redux with a use reducer. But Redux is kind of a big stick. And the context API, by contrast, is very lightweight. It's, uh, it's built into React. So there's no uh, modules or packages you need to add. And it's really, really easy to use. Today, I'm gonna to go through this little application that I wrote, um, which is my demo React context application. Some of you may have already downloaded it. I do encourage you to grab it, click on that green, use this template button and, uh, and make your own copy. It's a, it's a great proof of concept of the React context API. And I have mentioned to people before that having these proofs of concept, we call them POCs. As developers, those are those are our bread and butter. And this app is not bad. I've, I've kept it fairly simple. It's got a login page and an info page, and it uses state to switch between the two. But its main focus is the context API. So let's look at how it works. We have a login page. So here is my app. There is a login page, and that is a, a login component. I call it a page. It's a component. Let's look at my app.js because that's where everything starts. It's not much to it. I have my return. There's my render, or my template for my React application. And I have login and I have info. And you notice I have this pattern, not auth and, and auth and much like we did in the scheduler app. If auth is there, it will show the info page. If auth is false, it will show the login page. Obviously right now, auth must be false. Auth is some flag, or some shared state that I set in my application. It's either true or false. You're either logged in or you're not. And I called it auth. So now auth is false. So it renders this page. I didn't use React Router because that was not necessary for this demo and that would have complicated things. So I wrote my own kind of simple, really simple React Router using this thing, much like we did in the scheduler app. This, if that's true, show this page, otherwise show that page, okay. But where did that auth come from? Well, we'll deal with that later. What I'm doing right now is I'm sharing some state. I'm gonna focus on this counter that's my shared state. I'm sharing some state between, for my entire application. And let's take a look at how that state is shared. I have a file called state provider. And I structured my application with my pages, my providers, and my app. And that's it. My pages are my two pages, auth and or info and login. And my providers are things that provide state to me. And I wrote one called state provider. 
for lack of a better, a better name. And I set mine up in my application, my small application, as a single provider to provide state to my entire application. So everything in my application will have access to this state. All right. And now it looks a little complicated, but it's really not so bad. Um, you are welcome to use this and you will find you will understand it more by using it rather than just trying to watch me demonstrate it. I'll do my best here. Right now I have some state. So the core of this is some state. It's just some demo state. It has a counter and maybe some other stuff. In this particular instance, I made an object that I called state, much like we had in the scheduler app, but called it state. And I put three things in it, counter and some other items that I'm not using. I could just as well have had three separate states. That would have worked fine too, but where's the fun in that? I felt like doing this, my set states with my dot, dot, dot state, because that's just so much fun, isn't it? But really, I could have had three different use states, would have made no difference. So totally up to you. I just wanted to be a little more fun and do my, uh, my state as a single object with a counter in it. So I have some state. I have some functions that change my state, increment, decrement, and clear. And set state with the fun dot, dot, dot state counter. Okay. Once again, had that just been counter and set counter, I would have gone set counter count, you know, count plus one. So but that is an object. So I have three functions and you can have as many functions as you want to modify your state. This is where you do all the modifying state. For instance, maybe you're fetching something. Uh, I would have a use effect maybe with an empty square bracket that would fetch some data the first time and it would populate my state with some data. I'd have maybe a function that would change some data. It would do an access put and then change the data. This would all happen in my, my provider. It's providing all the functionality, all the interaction with state is happening here. Okay. So I have some functions and then I'm going to export those functions. It's exported slightly different. You notice this looks an awful lot like a custom hook, doesn't it? It's very similar. I've got some, my state, I've got some functions to manipulate, manipulate that state, but I'm not doing quite what a custom hook is doing. In the custom hook, I would simply return from this function that object. But here it's a bit different. I am creating a, an object here with all the things I want to export. I want to export the state itself. I want to export the counter inside the state just for fun, didn't have to, but I pulled out that counter from state and exported it as well. And I called it counter. And then I exported my three functions, increment, decrement, and clear. So what we do to make this work is I'm going to return state context.provider with the value of that data. What I am in effect doing is turning this into a component. This now becomes a React component called state provider. And I have state context, which is right there. It's a function called create context. And create context is part of React. It is a function you get from React, just like use state. It's called create context. You can create a context. So create context there, okay? And then I am using that as a component or the value of a component. So provider, provider data. So essentially this state provider becomes a component. Now, what does that do for me? Well, what it does, it allows me to wrap things. Anything that I wrap in a state provider component has access to all this stuff, anything. And all of its children and their children 
and their great great grandchildren still have access to those things directly. They can all access this state for free. And it really is for free. And I'll show you how. So let's see how that's implemented. This is how it's written. And this is a bit of magic. And you might want to simply just copy this for now and worry about um, editing it later. For example, I could have added something to manipulate this state. Maybe I'd have a, a function to set item one or get item one. But all I have is for counter right now. Let's look at how it's used. So to use it, it's not hard. I just simply wrap whatever I want to have access to that state in this state provider component. I import it. It's a component. This is just a component. And I simply wrap it just like that. I'm wrapping everything in my app. So now my entire app or everything in my app now has access to the state provided by that state provider. Okay. Well, how does that help me? Let's take a look. Let's look at the, the login page because that's what's being shown right now. Login's being shown. Let's go to login. Pages login. Okay. Now this one is not even using my state provider at all. It has no access to it. It's using a different provider. We'll talk about that later, but it's not using the state provider. So the state provider is invisible to login. It is not using it. But inside my login component, I have a counter component right there. We love counters. Everyone love counters. We love counters. There is a counter component right there. And that component is a child of login. So nowhere am I referring to the state contacts anywhere. It's not being passed as a prop. There's no prop being passed to counter. And there's no props being passed to login. But let's look at the counter component. The counter, look at that. It has access to those functions and the state. And how did that work? Well, if we looked earlier in our state provider, I exported, that's, you know, in air quotes, exported, I made available that object to anyone that was wrapped by my state provider. And from that object, you can grab the following things. You can grab state, counter, increment, decrement, clear. Well, that's what my counter is doing. It is grabbing those things. And it's using the magic hook called use context. Use context. Use context will return whatever was provided, exported, air quotes, from your provider. I'm importing the context from my state provider so I can use it. And then when I call use context, I get back that very object that was provided right there. It's great. Even though the parent didn't even see it, it went right past the parent. Counter is a child of login. Login has no reference to state context at all anywhere. So any child of this login page or a child of a child has access to use context. It's just really awesome. That's why I love this, this API. It makes managing state just so much easier. No props needed. Let's see if it works. I've got this counter. It does in fact increment the counter. Of course we love counters. Plus, plus, minus, minus zero. We love this, don't we? Okay, all right. Let's look at the info page. The info page also has no reference to the state context. It has another one, we'll talk about that later, but the state context, no reference, but it also has a counter in it. And counter, as we know, is doing use context. So, but if you notice, they're side by side, they're not children. There is no child relationship between the counter inside this login and the counter inside the info. They're different counters or different components, but they're all based on this component, which is using use context. So if I log in and it will, this will accept any 
log in. One, two, three. It doesn't matter. If I log in, look at my counter. It's the same state. Even though it's a different component, it's built differently, it is still using use context. And it got the state, the same one, which is just awesome. That's why I love the, the context API. It allows me to have state share anywhere in my application. And all I say is, oh, just use context there. And you magically get any state you want. And of course, counter needs three things. This, this, this is all it needs. It needs a counter and some functions. Great. And if I log out, if I decorate again, I go to 10, I log out, it's still 10. Okay. So it is a very, very simple, but extremely powerful API. And if used like this, by making a provider component, all you have to do is wrap anything you want. In this case, I'm wrapping those two pages or components in a provider. And then both of them log in and info. If they do a, oops, sorry, counter rather, if it does a use state, it will have access to the original state. So it's really a great way to share state. Okay. Now I have one other provider that I provided um, or I created my application. And that is this auth provider. And that's what my login and my info page have. So I have an auth provider and they are also sharing state. Right now I have use context, auth context. So looks like I have a context provider that's providing a function called login. Let's go to my app component. It's also using use context. It looks like I have a context providing some auth flag. So it looks like this auth context is kind of useful. It's providing an auth flag and it's providing a function to let me log in. It looks like I have an on submit button. And when I click that submit button, it's calling this login function, email password. Great, okay. And my app component has login. Let's look at the info. What's well, also doing a use context and it's grabbing a logout function and a user. Well, listen, what, what is this auth context doing? Let's take a look. Go to my providers and I have an auth provider. It's not terribly complex. I'm just holding on to two pieces of state, an auth flag, use state false, initial state, and a user object. Okay. And some functions. I have a login function, which doesn't do anything generates a random UID, sets the user in state to whatever I gave it, email and name, and sets the auth flag to true. And that's all it does. A logout function, which clears my user, sets the auth to false. Presumably in a real app, this would be a, a call to maybe a, a third party API, such as you know an OAuth call, or maybe a Firebase call if I'm using that for login, or Google Auth, or one of the many, many um, authentication providers. Um, and I would get back an ID and I could store my information in my object. Right now it's simply doing nothing. It's simply you know, logging anybody in, but now I'm logged in and look what I'm exposing. I'm exporting air quotes again, the following information, the auth flag, the user, and these two functions. And it's doing the same thing. It's converting this provider into a component that can be used to wrap something. But that's not being used here. Like I don't see anywhere where we're using this auth provider. It's not there anywhere. I've got my state provider, but what about my, my auth provider? Well, it turns out that if you try to, for example, use context and you're not wrapped in it, that doesn't work. Let's try that. Let's go to my counter. Let's try to use my context. If I try to do this inside my app here, like that, not defined. Let's define it. Import state context in my app right there. I'll put it here for now. There, okay. It's still not available to me. I'm getting a nasty error. 
you cannot use the use context unless you're wrapped in it. And clearly app itself is not wrapped in state context, is it? There is, this is app here. So I mean, we can't put it here because it wouldn't work in React. So it, we would have needed to have our entire app component wrapped in this state context if we wanted to be able to use context of it. So we couldn't do that, but it is working. If you notice, we are in fact using this context. So how did I do that? What I did, I did a little trick, because remember app.js, that's not the whole story. Remember back from our very first discussions of React, what comes before app.js? Anybody, what comes before app.js? App.js, we think of it as the top of our React, but it's not quite, is it? What else is above app.js? I'll take the third caller. Yes. Index.js. That's right. There's an index.js. That is the master JS. Let's look at index.js. And look at that. Index.js. That is my entry point into my React. And in index.js, I wrapped the entire application in this auth provider, which means everything, including app, will have access to this auth provider, which means I can do things like get the auth flag. And as we usually do, we like to do the minimum required to, oops, undo there. We do the minimum, so we don't need anything other than auth at this point. So all I pulled in was auth. I didn't need to have login, log out because that wasn't needed by my app component. But I did need auth to make my decision as to what page to render. If auth is false, show the login page. If auth is true, show the info page. Okay, and of course my login page, it needs more from the provider, okay? It needs the login function. It doesn't need the auth flag because you know, it couldn't have got here unless it had it, so it doesn't care about that. But it really needs the, the login function from our provider. And our info page, it doesn't need the auth flag, but it does need the current user because it wants to know what to show on the page. And it needs the logout. So we'll try this, login, and there we go. I'm logged in again. And there's my user info that we shared in state. Okay. So this, it looks complicated, but it's deceptively simple how to build an auth provider or a state provider in your application. You simply create a provider, in this case, a state provider, and you don't have to do a fancy object if you don't want to. I did that because I just think that's kind of cool to the dot, dot, dot state thing, right? From the, the scheduler app. Have some state that you want to save, make some functions to interact with that state, get stuff or pull stuff out of the state. And then expose those functions and the state itself to the outside world or to your children that you'll be wrapping the things in. And this pretty much stays the same, other than maybe the name of the context. That's pretty well just boilerplate. So you can take this JS file and really modify it for your own uses in your final project if you want. If you're having trouble you know, pushing props down all the way to manage state, this is a convenient way to share state. So they have a provider and its job is to manage widgets. So when it loads, it loads all the widgets in Axios, and then it has state for widgets array, okay? You wanna add a widget, you would expose a add widget function. The add widget function would call some function which does an axios.put and updates your array. And it's done because the array is exposed, so it had become instantly available, okay? Well, the question is, uh, provide syntax or clarity on the syntax of state context.provider. And which one? Props.children? Ah, okay. So we're going to go and dig into how the 
this is actually working. Okay. So you probably know from your advanced React lecture that this is how you can actually wrap things with the providers. So state context, we're creating a new context. The provider, that is part of what you get from a React context. We're creating a context using a React function. It's called create context. The provider is um, a built-in component, if you will, that is part of the state context. If you create a component with that, anything you wrap in that will have access to that thing. What I'm doing here, I'm abstracting that away. So this whole thing becomes a component and props.children, which means anything that my state provider component wraps, it'll be like having that around it. Remember the special prop called props.children. It means everything inside state provider ends up here. Let's look at how I used it. In my app.js, there it is. There is the props.children. So what's happening is I'm really taking everything inside state provider, the props.children, and it's ending up here, it's props up children. We learned that in the in the first two lectures of our React, how that works. Okay. So it's a bit of a trick. We're turning this into a reusable component that we can use in our app. Um, it's a nice pattern. You don't have to change this pattern much. Um, this can almost stay the same if you want, if you only plan on having one. Um, you might want to change the name to something else. Its main purpose is to interact with state. And since all the Axia stuff, that's what it does, you'd put that in here as well. It'll all be built into your providers. Okay. So that's pretty much it for this little uh, demo application. And because, I mean, use context is really such a simple thing. It seems complicated. Um, the only way you can use it or learn it is by using it. And you will find when you start using this, they go, wow, that actually is pretty simple. It, it seems almost too easy. It is, it is very, very simple. It's no more complicated than this. Just take whatever you have and as a provider and wrap whatever you want. You can do the whole app if you want or individual, individual parts of your app. Decide what you want to have access to state and then wrap those in your provider. Now, is it too good to be true? Not really. There is one small gotcha. Um, in that, this is now a component. So we know from our work in React that when a component, when its state changes, so if the state in my state provider changes, that component re-renders along with all its children. So since I'm managing my state now in this state provider, if this state changes, set state, it will re-render itself and all of its children, which is really all my children. Sounds like a soap opera. Okay. Um, so that means that state provider renders and all the children re-render as well. Now, that's not a big problem in a small, medium-sized app. You know, I don't mind, you know, rendering because it's a virtual DOM re-render not, of course, a browser render. And we do know that, that JavaScript can create 10,000 objects in the time it takes to update one thing in the real browser. So it's not a huge problem. But as the C had like millions or hundreds of thousands of components, it could start to be a performance hit. So for very, very large applications, you would have to judiciously select what you wrap in these providers. Maybe you wouldn't want to wrap your entire app in a single, you know, monolithic or huge um, provider. Um, one advantage of something like Redux is that Redux doesn't trigger a re-render of everything when you change things. So when applications get big enough, you might want to consider using something like Redux to manage your state. 
But for a small or medium, and medium is still pretty big. I mean, a medium app is still a pretty darn big app. Um, using uh, context is still a great choice. So, okay. Well, that's it for our, our context demo. This is make sure our counter still works. Look at that. Plus, plus. I just love counters. You know, there's like the gift of the world of counters. We can't get enough of them. Okay. So thank you everyone for joining us uh, for this context API. It is a very simple thing. I encourage you to download or clone the uh, GitHub. Make sure you click the uh, use this context first, of course, and then uh, make your own copy. Okay. All right. I will see everyone later and I'll be tuning in for uh, final projects.